Welcome back to Red Recapped. Today I'm going to describe an action crime movie called, The Commando, released in 2022. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. The film commences at a cartel laboratory. An elite agent, James Baker, leads a DEA SWAT team in preparation to breach the lab. The sniper takes out the initial guard, signaling the SWAT team to move forward. Upon their arrival, a fierce firefight erupts between the criminals and the SWAT unit. As the authorities gain the upper hand, the criminals retreat downstairs. James and his team follow, systematically neutralizing the criminals. After dealing with most of the Mexican cartel members, James commands the last remaining thug to drop his weapon. In a momentary distraction, another criminal catches James off guard with a knife, but is swiftly subdued. Eventually, the adversaries are vanquished, yet James makes the grim discovery that, inadvertently, three hostages lost their lives. Struggling with hallucinations and PTSD-induced nightmares from the tragic incident, he's granted leave to recover. After a prolonged absence, he reunites with his wife and two teenage daughters. The focus then shifts to an incarcerated criminal named Johnny, on the brink of release. Inside the prison, a vengeful group targets him for past transgressions. Johnny, a former Iraq and Afghanistan veteran, skillfully overpowers his assailants and calmly lights a cigarette. Demonstrating improved conduct, he convinces the authorities of his readiness for a fresh start, earning his release. Meanwhile, James shares a meal with his family, his conscience weighed down by the memory of the hostages. Later, his daughters arrange a short getaway to the mountains, recognizing the need for quality time together. Back at the prison, Johnny's friends arrive to pick him up and drive him home. During the car ride, they inquire about the money he stashed away before his imprisonment. In a revealing flashback, we learn that Johnny concealed $3 million in a house. As fate would have it, James and his family currently reside in the very same house where Johnny had hidden his fortune. Unbeknownst to them, James' daughter stumbled upon the money and started using it. With this newfound wealth, the daughters arranged a vacation for their parents. One evening, as one of the girls takes more money from the bag, her sister discovers it and asks where she found it. They argue, with one believing they shouldn't touch the money if it isn't rightfully theirs, while the other sister asserts it's now hers since she found it. Meanwhile, Johnny and his friends go to meet his brother, emphasizing the need to retrieve the money discreetly, without drawing any attention. That evening, the gang arrives at James's house. A man steps out of the car, meticulously inspecting the premises. Upon his return to the car, he informs the others that there are four people inside. Just then, James, who had been sleepwalking, awakens abruptly and seizes his gun. He descends the stairs and fires a shot through the window the gang attempted to breach. Startled, the three intruders hastily retreat. James regains full consciousness, alarmed by the incident. His wife awakens and retrieves the gun. Overwhelmed by guilt, he suggests leaving to ensure their safety, but she insists he stays. The following day, an old friend of James, Sebastian, pays him a visit for a drink and a chat. James confides in Sebastian, asking him to stay behind to safeguard his family should he lose control again. He seeks support from a doctor, who assures him that his experiences are typical after such a traumatic event. Meanwhile, Johnny's associate briefs him on James' background. Johnny then enlists the help of his friend, a police officer, offering him a 10% cut of the $3 million. James engages with the psychologist, who recommends a vacation with his wife to unwind and aid his recovery from the trauma. One day, James is brought to the police station, where Johnny's police contact informs him of an arrest warrant. However, James discerns that the warrant lacks the judge's signature, rendering it invalid. The officer contacts Johnny, conceding that the plan failed and James is free to go. That afternoon, James and his wife embark on their mountain vacation, leaving their two daughters at home. As they drive away, one of the henchmen steps out of the car, feigning an engine check. Meanwhile, Dominic is anxious to enter the house. In the evening, the henchmen arm themselves, unaware of what's about to unfold. The sisters have arranged a party, inviting a group of friends over to watch a movie. However, the henchmen seem unfazed and have no intentions of aborting their mission. James and his wife are still on the road, but James is haunted by flashbacks of the incident. His wife notices his distress and inquires about what happened. James shares that after dealing with the criminals, they discovered they had unintentionally killed three hostages, a mother and her two daughters. His wife attempts to comfort him, assuring him that it was a tragic mistake, something that could have happened to anyone. Back at home, one of the daughters, Natalie, isolates herself in her room, feeling uncomfortable about the party. 
Inadvertently, she knocks over a lamp and discovers a box concealed by Johnny, containing a substantial amount of money, a precious ring, and a photo of a woman. Natalie decides to conduct an online search about the previous inhabitants of the house. She stumbles upon an article detailing Johnny's arrest, along with a picture of the woman who is likely his ex-wife. Determined, Natalie opts to stash the box in her computer case. She contacts James' friend Sebastian, resolved to show him her discovery. She also briefs him on Johnny's apprehension, and he advises her to stay composed. Sebastian instructs her to secure the money and then go talk to her sister. Meanwhile, Dominic, one of the henchmen, takes pills to bolster his resolve before embarking on their mission. The other men are concerned about him, fearing he might do something heinous if he loses control. Back with Natalie, she discovers her sister enjoying herself with a boy and urgently tries to get in touch with her father. She leaves a message, insisting he call back immediately. The thugs approach the house, concealing their identities with masks. They come across two teenagers in a car, enjoying their time. One of the henchmen seizes the boy, while the girl attempts to flee. Tragically, Dominic shoots her. Sebastian senses that something is amiss and instructs the remaining teens to head home. A young man steps outside to relieve himself, but Dominic locates him and opens fire. The thugs then force their way into the house, while Dominic continues his ruthless assault on the teenagers. Natalie locks herself in her room, seeking refuge beneath the bed. She dials her mother's phone, and James picks up. Regrettably, he struggles to hear her clearly and assures her he'll call back soon. His wife urges him to redial, but they're unable to get a signal. Inside the house, Dominic forcibly enters Natalie's room, discovering her hidden beneath the bed. As James finally manages to get a signal, he comes across Natalie's distressing message about intruders in the house. James is unsure whether he's experiencing another hallucination or if it's reality. He plays the message for his wife, who affirms its authenticity. Attempts to reach Sebastian prove futile, prompting them to make a swift decision to head back home. Meanwhile, the henchmen continue their search for the hidden money within the house. Once they gather the loot in the kitchen, one of them realizes a significant issue. They've located everything except Johnny's deceased wife's ring. Furthermore, Johnny's brother contends that $100,000 is unaccounted for from the $3 million they were tasked with recovering. He approaches Natalie's sister, inquiring about the missing funds, but she insists she has no knowledge of it. Fortunately, the other henchman ultimately uncovers the remaining money concealed behind a wall. Meanwhile, Sebastian, though bound, manages to free himself at last. Sebastian swiftly takes down Johnny's brother, throwing him forcefully to the ground. The henchman attempts to seize the gun, but Sebastian forcefully smashes his head against the floor before delivering a fatal shot to his head. Just as Sebastian gains the upper hand, the other henchman intervenes, delivering a powerful kick to his head. The henchman contacts Johnny, delivering the grim news of his brother's demise. Meanwhile, on the streets, a fierce battle ensues. Ray, an old acquaintance of Johnny's, engages in a brutal brawl with another opponent. Ray emerges victorious and reunites with Johnny after years apart. Johnny discloses the tragedy of his brother's death and instructs them to follow him, as he has a task at hand. Later, Johnny and his gang of thugs descend upon James's residence. Johnny locates his brother's lifeless body, takes a knife, and ruthlessly ends Sebastian's life. He seizes Sebastian's phone and dials James, issuing a chilling warning that any harm befalling his daughters will seal Johnny's own fate. James quickly alerts Johnny that he's already en route and awaits him. Johnny guides Natalie to his room, where she hands over the box containing the ring. Meanwhile, James and his wife return home. He instructs her to remain in the car while he confronts the criminals. As he approaches the house, he's noticed by a pair of henchmen in a car. One of them steps out to investigate, but James, hidden beneath the car, swiftly incapacitates him. The other thug attempts to exit the vehicle, but James overpowers him rendering him unconscious. James proceeds past the house, dispatching two more adversaries. Just as he continues his path, a henchman sneaks up behind him, attempting a strike to the head. James reacts swiftly, subduing the assailant. Shortly after, he receives a message from his wife, informing him that she's called the police. Outside, Dominic discovers the lifeless bodies. James boldly steps into the house and locates his first daughter, urging her to flee outside for safety. Subsequently, a henchman attempts to stab him, but James astutely detects his shadow and swiftly dispatches him. Meanwhile, Johnny and his crew receive word of James' presence. When Ray spots him, he challenges James to a hand-to-hand -hand showdown. 
Although James manages to inflict a few wounds with a knife, Ray disarms him. Still, James perseveres and, with two potent kicks to the head, subdues Ray. Dominic advances into the house armed, but James seizes the opportunity and catches him by surprise. Dominic tries to fire, but James redirects his hand, causing the shot to strike himself. James proceeds upstairs. Inside, a henchman named Trey holds Natalie hostage, menacing James with her life. Unwavering, James aims the gun at Trey and dispatches him with a single shot. He then embraces his daughter, urging her to make her way downstairs. James calls out Johnny's name, declaring that only the two of them remain. He flings Trey's lifeless body into the room, prompting Johnny to discharge a couple of shots. This sets the stage for a fierce hand-to-hand -hand showdown, during which James delivers a punishing series of blows. Just in the nick of time, a police officer arrives on the scene. James skillfully persuades him to take down Johnny, suggesting they split the money and make their escape. The officer consents and dispatches Johnny. However, as James' wife makes her entrance, she swiftly neutralizes the officer with a gunshot. Finally, the authorities arrive, ensuring the safety of James and his family. They emerge from the ordeal unscathed and secure. Thanks for being with us. If you want more content like this, consider subscribing. Don't forget to hit the notification bell and give us a thumbs up to support the channel.